Pastor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God good, right? Amen. All the time? Amen. All the time. Thank you, Lord. Job chapter 16. <clears throat> Before you know it, just by mismanagement, just by not taking the the time to do the do, to do the work and to do the due diligence uh, to see to it that the business stays up and going. Well, you know, I believe too. Us as God's people, we have a responsibility uh, to keep our temple uh, in in check. Uh, I think we should do inventory on ourselves occasionally uh, as the years. Go by, and as our time passes, uh, you know, we, we start out for God and we work for God, and, and, and we start to lose just a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more. And before long, it's kind of a just a thing we do. Uh, it's not something that we feel, it's not something that uh, that God is a part of. It simply just becomes a mechanics. Uh, and we just become mechanical, and we just show up for church because that's what you do on Sunday, and we really don't come looking for a blessing. We don't come even looking for uh, a, a conversation with God or a touch from heaven. We, we, don't, we, we, we got to where we're so complacent that we come to church and we have our services and we do our mechanics and we leave and we don't think anything about it. We're like, and I, we say, wait a minute, what, what, what happened? What did, you go to, what did you get? Why did you go? Why did you keep going? Uh, are you truly in love with Jesus? Uh, have you fully given Him your life? Or is this just something you do every now and then on Sunday? You know, is it something just to break the monotony? Or, listen, I want everybody to come into the house of God looking for God. Uh, looking for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, I mean, if we can't have the presence of the Holy Ghost with us in this room, this is not a church. We're not doing it God's way. Uh, we have to be aware. We have to stay awake. We have to be in tune with God. And we have to do a, a constant inventory of our lives and see if our life really matters or if we just punching the buttons. Uh, are we doing what's right or not? Is our church in the right ministry uh, that it should be involved in? Is it doing the things as a church that God intends for us to do? And am I as an individual and you as an individual, are you doing the things you ought to do and you're called to do? That's what God... And you're supposed to enjoy all of it. Man, it's supposed to be a joy to serve the Lord. Amen. amen. I'm preaching way better than y'all amen, and I know that. <laughs> amen. Don't go, don't go, don't go silent on me now. I'm just getting started. Amen. So a time to take inventory. So let's do that this morning. Let's take inventory of our own lives and see if it really matters for God. Amen. See if it really matters for Him. I, I, I want to to remind you, number one thing, number one thing, I think, yeah, I don't think, it, I don't think it will hurt you to do this daily. Go back to Calvary before you get started. 
remind yourself, I'm a child of the King. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a born again, blood bought believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm not like this world, nor do I want to be. I'm not trying to get along with the world. I'm not trying to fit in. I won't ever fit in. God's people ain't never fit in with the world. <laughs> and when they did, they were out of step with God. If you get lined up with the world, then you're out of, walk, uh, out of the will of God. So you have to remember that. But, but, but a daily examination. Jesus don't mind meeting you at Calvary every morning. And, and, and you be reminded of what Calvary really meant. And how much it, I think we get so casual about our, our, our conversion, our, our, our time with Christ, we become so casual about it. It's like, well, I, I, I don't really need to get excited about that too much. I, you know, y'all don't get too excited and, and everything. We think you'll just settle on down. Listen, I think we'll be hanging off the rafters in here when we think about God and what He's done for us. And if we met at Calvary every morning and we met our Lord every day, I'm going to tell you, we wouldn't come into the presence of the Lord uh, with old limp shoulders and a sour put look on our face and look like we're just barely here. Uh, we wouldn't do that. And I know we wouldn't do that. So I think when we start taking inventory of our life, I, I think we ought to, number one, say, what have I done with Jesus today? Well, what part is He playing in my life today? Is God really real or not? But you need to get a detailed account of your salvation. You know, it's not hard to do. It's not hard to do. My mind takes me right down that old road that went right in front of the Fairbanks Baptist Church. Right there in Purvis, Mississippi. I know I can carry myself back to that place that God saved me at. I know. And listen, that gives me more confidence than anything else I can do is I remind myself of how saved I really am. I sold out to the Lord. I belong to Him. He's my resource. He's my source. He's where I get everything from. Everything I have comes from God and everything I got belongs to God. I'm just reading it. I'm just paying rent on this thing down here. It don't belong to me and I don't want it. I got a better place. I got a better home awaiting me than what this world here has got to offer. So I'm just renting this place uh, that I got right now. And God's my landlord. Amen? Because I don't want to get so attached to this world that the Lord thinks for a minute I want to stay. I don't want to stay. I want to go. I want to go. I was almost out of here too. A year ago, a year and a half ago, I was never gone. And y'all <laughs> prayed me out of that. Good enough to go enough alone, I was going to be gone. But no. Somebody prayed, Brian, an old fat preacher back. Don't let him die. Lord, if you ain't going to take all of us, don't take him. <laughs> Amen. Now here I am. So you got to deal with me now. But I think we just have a constant detailed account of our salvation. We should remember it. And we should cherish it. And it should immediately separate us from the world and the world we live in that we work in. You know, it just takes that little, he gives us that little cave we can crawl up in as his child and say, you know what? That's okay. You can think of me that way. You can put me down. You can make fun of me. Have a party. I'm going to see the king. I'm trying to get myself ready to go see the king. That's what I'm living here for. And I'm, when this thing's over, I'm going to see the king. I promise you. I'm going to see the king. When I get to heaven, I want to see grandma, and I want to see my mama, and I want to see my daddy, and I want to see my loved ones in the back. But I want to see Jesus too. He's my number one priority when I get to heaven. Mama never be there when I get through with Jesus. But I want to go spend about a million years at his feet. Amen. Praise to him. And I love my mom, and I cherish the thought of my mom. But I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Him there with them open arms. And I want to run as fast as I can. I won't be in the shape I'm in now. I have a brand new body. Amen. Way about what will my legs weigh now? And I'll take off running for Jesus, buddy. Here we go. I'll run as hard. What it says, y'all don't care too much now. Fat people can talk about fat people. But uh, any people can't lie. Amen. Amen. As long as you're in the same club, you can laugh. But if you some little hot dog, it's going to be laughing. Amen. Amen. So a perfect account of your own salvation. You've got to know that you've got to know that you know Him. But that's where it all starts at. And then you have to realize 
want you to say, what am I doing for God? How consistent am I? What does it mean to me to get ready for church? You know, you know, some people get ready for church and then other people just get ready for church. You know what I'm saying? See, I gotta kinda I gotta kinda start revving that engine a little bit before I come off the clutch and just have church. I can't just have church without revving that engine up a little bit, getting ready to come. Oh, you just you just emotional and I well, tag me emotional, whatever you want to do, that's fine. You know, uh, because you ain't seen emotional until I see Jesus. I'm going to get emotional then, buddy. And I'm going to go and do it down here some, too. Uh, you know, just so I'll fit in up there. When they all running around, they doing some kind of uh, praise another Lord so I can just join right in with them and they won't even know I came in and I'll just be worshiping just like they do. So I, I, you might as well get used to it. Amen. But, 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 but when we examine ourselves, and we start thinking about what really are we doing, do we have a deliberate absence from church or not? Do you ever stay home from church for nothing? <coughs> wow! Time to operate. The operating room turns out to side of the night. We've got to get quiet in the operating room. Stand like look there. One of y'all is like wide eyed. And, uh, me? Yeah. Do you ever stay home just to stay home when it's church time? I know you can worship God right by yourself. You can do it in the bathtub. You can worship the Lord. But it ain't nothing like gathering together on, at, at the appointed time in God's house and getting loved on by a bunch of people that love God. That's, that's what I look forward to. I look forward to loving on a bunch of people that's been loving on God all week. Amen? If some of them rub off on me, get me up, get me feel a little bit better. But if you're having a deliberate absence from the house of God, and you stay home just cause, you need to get yourself right with God. Amen. You need to get in a church. You need to get somewhere and start. Let's, 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 boy, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're raising these little shavers that's just coming up, God, don't, don't, don't rob them of what God wants to give them. God wants to give them something. God wants to make their life beautiful and, and lasting and meaningful and all of those things that God has promised you and gives to you. Don't you rob your children of that. Let them be what God's called them to be. And you know what? They, they may be the next Billy Graham in here. Uh, 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 the next D.L. Moody or you don't know John R. Rice or, or Jack Howes or they may be another one of them sitting right beside you that could be a part of the end time revival and become the greatest preacher in the land. You don't know. But I'm telling you, without the, the right foundation, it ain't ever going to happen. And that's your job. That's your job. And your kids ought not see you just stay home cold. Just deliberately stay at the house. Uh, and, and, and shun the, the, the work of God. Uh, and the presence of God. And, and the fellowship of God's people. You shouldn't do that. Because you set such a bad example. You set such a bad example. And, it, 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 and you, tell, you know what? I'll tell you what you will find that your children love God sometimes a lot more than you do or a lot more than you act like you do. Amen? Because they think you can just say it out loud. They just think it's real. See, they think Jesus is real. Uh, they think there's a real God in heaven. Uh, they think there's a God that they can talk to uh, that will save them and He really cares about them. And, 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 and hey, listen, it changes their world when when they find out somebody loves them like Jesus did. Hey, it's something to be loved like Jesus loved us. He looked at us and, and loved us anyway. He knows us and loved us anyway. He knows us from where we came from, everything about us, everything we ever done wrong. He still loves us anyway. And He wanted us anyway. And you know how many people go through this world every day thinking nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. I'm going to tell you right now, if for no other reason... Uh, for you to examine how deliberate you are about serving God, you wouldn't have to go a day thinking that somebody don't love me. You'd always have the Lord right there uh, loving on you. So, so you need to check uh, your, your account of the salvation that you claim to have. Because I'm going to say, having salvation changes a lot about a person. It is a, it is a total, I'm talking about you don't know who they are now kind of change. Uh, from, from dark to light. I'm talking about a difference. I mean, a, a fine 
uh, discernible line that they stepped over one day and said, my God, man, they had done change the whole thing. They done took the Lord serious. They done got serving God serious now. Uh, you know? And that's the way God changes people. And if you ain't got that, if you still say, well, I'm waiting on God. Don't wait on God. God's prepared everything for you to get right with Him with. Uh, find, get you a Bible. Put your nose in that thing and start digging around in there. Hey, it won't take you long to get real excited about what God's done for you. <laughs> you start reading the story of, of what Jesus did. And you have to remember, Jesus was God with us. Now, that was God with us, living that life and giving that life for you. But if you have a deliberate uh, time to, to stay home and, and, and we over here having church, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Amen. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And I'm telling you, it's, well, I, I got more rest in that time than I did. That's some rest you didn't need. That right there was some rest you didn't need because there ain't nothing gives you greater rest than coming to God's house. When God's people come to God's house and hear God's word preached and fellowship with each other and sing and, and make merry and praise the Lord, uh, that's the greatest relief that you can get and the greatest rest you can have. There's no greater place to have rest than this. Boy, I got a long way to go and that top clock up there is going crazy. Just have to hang on is all I'm taking. <clears throat> and if you got to leave, don't do it yet, but I'm going to talk about you after church. You do. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to talk bad about you. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, uh, an, uh, a deliberate account of when God saved me. The certainty. How often do you go back to Calvary? And how often do you deliberately just stay at home? How long has God got away with it? Before you kick in. He saved you. Well, that was a year ago, that was two years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago. I want to tell you right now, I'm going to give you a little secret. God didn't save anybody to sit on the Amen. What? God didn't save anybody to do nothing but sit on the pew. Right. He designed this thing for us all to work on, work together. Work for the cause of Christ, pull together, love each other, and, and reach out to a lost and dying world that don't know God, and, and get ourselves right with Him, get the sin out of our life, move the things that God's not pleased with, so He can use us mightily. I mean, He can listen. He's turned the world upside down uh, with just two men, Amen. just a dozen. That's where the whole thing came from. Just those twelve disciples. Uh, that's where it all started at, and that's the more we honored over here. And worldwide. Listen, somebody had to put out a little bit of effort. You hear me? Now, I know it's a big blessing of God, but He had to have people. He had to have people that do the work. We got a list in there of positions for the new year. It's not filled up yet. See, if it's me, I'd be waiting till I'd be walking back and forth over until they put the list up. I'd be like, let me put that list up tomorrow. Man, I hope Sunday they put that list up. I'd be walking back and forth. I'd be looking, I'd be looking if, it, if I wasn't a pastor, if I was going to take the nursery, I'd be running back and forth by that thing. See if I could find a blank on that place for me to put my name in. That's what I intend on doing. I intend on teaching the third graders next year. I, I want that. God sent me. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to get my name on that place so I can get it on there. And drag around and wave and wave and wave. Well, I'm going to see if somebody else is going to do it. God didn't call two of you. He didn't call one. And then an assistant and I'll... But he told me one. You ain't, ain't mixed up. God ain't mixed up. Amen. That's God's business. If you let him do the calling and you do the listening, and then when you hear what he says, you go do it. You won't have to worry about that list ago. You put the list up one day, by the next Sunday, be totally full, we'd be ready for the new year. Right. We start handing out books, we ready to go. If we was all sensitive to the Holy Spirit that we're supposed to be. Are you having a delay in you? Well. I know I need to sign the name, but you know how they're talking about me right now. Or you know how I'm talking about them. Or how we're talking about each other, I mean. Or I don't know, I don't that's not what I mean. I mean them talking about me. Something like somebody talking about somebody. Or something's why I'm not putting my name on that. I can guarantee you how to fit the church, somebody talking about somebody. Amen? I ain't never been in one yet that ain't somebody talking about somebody. Right? Amen. Now ours ain't a hey. The same thing goes on here every now and then. Amen. 
All right, so a delay. How long does God have to wait is what I'm saying. You know you weren't saved, you just sit on the pew. How long before you dig and start digging and find that wine? God saved me and put me here and did it back in church. What about when you become, you remember when you used to worship God and everything was good and you couldn't do enough for God and anything you found out that needed to be done, you'd go do it. And, oh, you remember those good old days? What happened to those good old days? when you really used to serve God and it mattered. And it made a difference. And you sat and chomped at the bits all week long for Wednesday night to come. And then you chomped at the bits all the rest of the week to see Sunday coming. I'm happy to see Sunday coming, see? It's not a grudge to me. It's not, it's not something I've done. I love Sunday coming. I tell you once, I won't talk about it. <laughs> I told you. Won't you Amen. <laughs> <laughs> How do I treat people? First off, in my family, in the Fent Church family, how do I treat the people? You can tell how much I'm surrendered to God by how I treat other people. How do, does everybody at this church think I love them? Does everybody at this church know I love them and care for them? Does everybody at this church know that they matter to me? That I'm, if nobody else, that I'm a person in this church that cares for them, that loves them, and that worries about them when they don't come, or worries about them when they're sick or when they're down? Do I love people like I should love people? I want to tell you this. When you can hurt feelings without feeling hurt, you're not very spiritual. That's right. Amen. That's right. If you can deliberately hurt feelings and it not hurt your feelings, then you're not right with God. Amen. If you come in here with the intent to hope that they had passed by you so you could say something to hurt their feelings, you bad shape. Right. You bad shape. You're not supposed to be here trying to hurt somebody's feelings. You're not supposed to be here trying to get revenge on somebody or say something to hurt somebody. If hurting somebody don't hurt you, that's ungodly. Amen. That's not right. That, that's throwing discord among the brothers. Uh, that's keeping something going. And, and we should, none of us be guilty of that. But I'm here, we just do an inventory now. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. The Lord picked out the particulars. Uh, but every one of us is pricked in our hearts to some degree. He said to himself, there was one time I said something, I should have kept my mouth shut. Right. I should have not spoke. I should have not said something. Amen. So how is your relationship with your church and your church family? Uh, because... That's where everything is, is gathered up at. That's where you put back together at. That's the, that's the healing place for you to go out there and fight the battle again for another week. And this would be a place we could all come up uh, to be able to hide from the world and just crawl up in here and say, look, we're going to worship our God for a little while. Church will be there. When we, I mean, the world will be there when we get back, I guarantee you. And they'll still be saying the same old stuff. And they'll still be trying to pull the same old trick. And they'll still be doing exactly like they did. So I'm telling you right now, you're not going to miss none of that out there by giving God an hour every Sunday morning. You're not going to miss none out there to give God a little time. Because I guarantee you it'll be back, or it'll be there when you get back, it'll probably be worse than it was when you left. Amen. So, so don't worry about that. You need to constantly proclaim your, your state and standing with God. The world ought to be able to discern in you that you are part of something bigger than you are. Bigger than you. That you have a concern for a whole mass of people. For a whole group of people that they don't even know anything about it. They don't have anything like that in their life. Because every time they say something to me, I say, well, I'll just take it to the church. I'll just, I'll just I'll take it to the church. Or, or, or I, let me let me think about that. Let me get with God on it. And they're like, what, what? Don't you make your own decisions? No. I quit doing that a long time. <laughs> hey, man, I made this mess when I was making the decision. So I quit all that crazy stuff. I quit all that. I could make a bigger mess out of my life than anything you've ever seen. And I can do it real quick. So I let God do all the deciding. And I just follow Him. I'm even on the little things. I'm talking about on the little stuff. I only make no no big no no little decisions without God. You know, I 
I, 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 I get dressed on Sunday morning standing here and say, God, how you like this? That we are. Thank God to put it up or down. What you say? I just say, hey, he tell me how to get dressed. He tell me what to do, where to go. You know, I, 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 and I'm ever, I'm ever before him. I'm ever before his face. I'm always before the face of God. So I got to do a certain thing. I got to be a certain way, you know, because God's looking. That's right. Right? And you have to remember always God's looking. That's right. Thank right? You. So I'm going to find a place to play. Do an inventory. Would you do an inventory on your life and see what you really got? Have you really got some meat and substance to what you claim to have? Or is it really just a mechanical thing that you follow your way through? Does it mean anything to you? Does it have uh, an everlasting promise to it? Do, do you feel it every day? And if not, you need to. And then I want to close with going back to the idea of those of you that are lost, that are in this room and don't even really know what I'm talking about. It sounds crazy to you. That's okay. It's a, that, that's okay. That's what people that don't know Jesus uh, think like uh, until they get to where they know Jesus and then the things that are spiritually discerned, then they begin to understand those things. But we look crazy to that world out there. I know. But they don't know the God we know. Yeah. They don't know our Master. Right. And they don't know we're just children of the King and, and we act accordingly. And they don't understand it. And that's okay. And I don't get mad at them for not understanding it. And I don't get mad at them for putting me down because that's okay. They don't understand me. My job is to get them to understand me and understand why I serve God and who God is to me and how much that matters to me. So lost person here today, if you're in this house and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, that's what you're here for today. Now there's a lot of people all around that are here for other reasons. They're saved people that are here because they've committed themselves to this church. There are people here for this reason, that reason, that. If you're here and don't know Jesus as your Savior, your personal Savior, unless you've had some, a long time with Jesus and confessing of sin, forsaking of sin, and giving your life to Him, if you had some of that, that's what you're here for. And those of you that are saved, what you're here for is you need to be reminded of God, hey, you need to catch another gear and get ready and get after the work and get involved in it and start doing stuff for God like you promised you'd do. He did exactly what He said He'd do for you. Now you need to do something for Him. If He didn't fail at all in doing for you what He promised, and He hadn't failed one bit, He delivered everything just like He said He would. Now, you ought to be giving some back. Because like I said to begin with, nobody was called to just warm a few. You've got a job here at this church. Oh, no, I don't either. Well, if you don't, it's because of your own business. It's because you don't want one. Because there's more work around here to be done than everybody in this room being involved can do. And that's the way it's always supposed to stay. It's supposed to stay a little bit more than we can do. So God keeps bringing people, and we keep growing and keep moving forward for God. There's a, watch it when you get in a church that's, that gets complacent and gets stale. And get satisfied. So, uh, well, we have a church. But you know what? I can kind of come or go. I can go or stay. I'm not really that much into it. I just, Mom and always went there. So I, I, I went there. And, you know, and I, that's just what I do. I don't really get involved. And I know that they do that down there, but I don't. What are you talking about? This is your church. Amen. You are part of you, You're the finger or the thumb or, or, or some part of the working part of the body of Christ. What part are you neglecting to do? Well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. Ah, it won't get done. If somebody else will, they already would. So you need to you need to get in the place that that like you know you you, you harnessing up a, a a a row of horses to pull a wagon and you you got six of them in there and you got two harnesses empty. They ain't gonna pull that good. They don't pull that good. And it'll go nearly as fast as God intended for it to move. You see? We, we, we are so bad in need of moving forward and, and, and getting ready to build a new building. Uh, and we, but we've got to have enough to undergird. We've got to have enough dedicated people 
that can be counted on, that you can count on, that they're serving God, that they're tithing, that they're committed like they're supposed to be. When that goes on, you have no problem with it. If everybody's doing that, everything that's needed, the day that's needed, construction can begin. And I'm telling you, construction should begin on that right now. But we're not financially ready for it. We're, I, I, I'm praying to God by the spring of the year, we won't pull the slab. But we we got some inventory time to take and, and are getting right with God. And it'll take every bit of us, uh, everything we can do to accomplish that. And so we need everybody to harness up. As I close, if you want to be a part of something bigger than you, if you've got a home church, get to work in it. If you don't, come help us. The Lord's about to come back. It's almost time to go home, and we all need to be found busy doing God's work. And if you're here lost and don't know Jesus, come to Him today. Come to Him today because... That's the point of everything that we do. Everybody here is supposed to be concerned about the next person that's saved. We want to see somebody else saved. You do as God leads you in this invitation time. This is God opening it up and saying, hey, heaven's door's open. Come on in. Come on in. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you're called to do. Do what you've been led to do. And if you're here lost, the Lord's just telling you to come on inside. Come on inside. Father, as we lift these up to you now, God, <coughs> with a crowd this big, Lord, the damages are that there's a, a lot of lost people in this room that want to be saved. Satan is bound from this place. He can't, he can't do anything here. So, Lord, I ask you to have your way. And I know you convict the lost sinner. But Lord, I know that you're doing some convicting this morning. God, you convict your people as well. If when they take inventory, they come up short. God, that they'd be willing to admit that. Confess and forsake it. And Lord, I know that you do your work. I don't need to tell you what to do. But I just say that because we all need to understand how important it is. Lord, you have your way. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.